right, I'm ready to book Vaughn Sumner on assault charges and disturbing the peace. Now, you want to press charges or not? What do you think? I'm not the one who got popped in the mouth. I'm certainly willing to let you guys talk it out and save the taxpayers some money. You should be reveling in this. Uh, what? What? Well, it's just everything I've been through with Vaughn. You'd think that a guy would jump at a chance to get him, you know? Anybody but Peter Davidson, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something, Peter. I am here to uphold the law to protect your rights. But I can tell you from experience, vengeance never does, never really does what they say it's supposed to. Okay, I don't want to press charges. I was just trying to get him to listen to me. Well, maybe you will now with us refereeing. Why don't I go downstairs, I'll get Mr. GQ, and I'll bring him up here. You two can talk it out a little bit. Look, if it doesn't work out, you can still press charges. I'll book him, all right? Okay. All right. Okay, I'll talk to him. Maybe this time he'll listen. How about if I run on down and get us some fettuccine alfredo from Dominici's and serve it to you in the comfort of your own home, hmm? One dinner for a night is plenty. Oh, come on, Stacy. You didn't even get anything to eat. I really feel bad about that. I'll even get old man Dominici to serve up the Parmesan cheese himself, huh? You know, Russ, this really isn't that much of a big deal. I mean... I never really thought much about this relationship anyway. Not to say that I didn't enjoy it, Wait, 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 wait a second. You never thought that there was anything between us? And, and, and you got all upset when I tried to explain that to you? Well, there wasn't, was there? You tell me. We had a good time. But you thought it was going to be more than that. What is this, the Spanish Inquisition or something? No, no, it's not what it is. I just uh, want to know how you really feel, what your feelings are. Just, Stacy, it's okay. Tell me how you really feel. Why? So you'll feel better? Do you want me to tell you what a wonderful guy you are and that you'll always be special in my life, even though things didn't work out? Would that make you feel better? No. No, what would make me feel better is if you came down on me like you're doing right now and get it all out. I don't want to be puffed up here. I just want you to admit how angry you are at me. You got a right to. I am angry at Terry Davidson. And I'm angry at myself. As for you and the rest of the world. Hey, why don't I believe you? All right. I feel a twinge of anger towards you. Yeah, about that much. Why did Terry have to say anything to anyone? Why couldn't I just trust her? Doesn't she think I'm, I'm strong enough to handle my own relationships? Well, I think maybe you're being just a little bit unfair. Unfair? I'm a big girl. I don't need you to take me out to dinner, sit me down, and tell me how we have nothing between us. If you'd passed me a note in gym, it would have been more subtle. I know Terry Davidson. She must have had a good reason for saying something. That doesn't make me feel any more comfortable right now. May I ask you one thing? Sure. What? If circumstances had been different, would we have been a possibility? But there's a misunderstanding here. There's been no misunderstanding, Davidson. You've wanted her for a long time now. I just think the pressure of that fantasy got too much for your little mind. Oh, come on. You wanted her so bad, you'd have done anything. You'd have lied to me or anyone, for that matter. 
Well, just hold it a second. I'm the one who came to you and t I told you Courtney and I were through. Okay, I admitted that, that we loved each other at one time, but it's over now, and what's important is that... What's important is your vows. It's not something that Courtney and I had in the past. <laughs> you expect me to believe that little confession of yours, Peter? I see right through this pillar of righteousness, Dak. It doesn't work for me, okay? I'm beginning to see everything very clearly now. This ploy of yours, the support for our marriage, that's all it was, a ploy on your part to get me to let my guard down. Hey, the only thing I'm guilty of is not being honest with Courtney, telling her our relationship's over. But I'm not gonna take the whole blame here. She's unhappy because you're unable to satisfy her. Look, don't play analyst with me, Peter. Don't put the blame on me trying to smooth this thing over. I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll see what a court of law has to say about that. What's that supposed to mean, huh? It means that I fully intend to pursue pressing charges against you for assault and attempted rape. And honestly, I could care less whether you choose to drop the charges against me because, frankly, I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Everything I did to you, Peter. I'd like to go now, Officer Bradley. Things have been different. It could have been something between us. I mean, why not? Come on. You're a beautiful girl. You're a lot of fun. You bring a lot of depth to a relationship. Oh, I get it. I'm a great girl. The timing was just no, no, wrong. No, no, that's not it. That's not it at all. The problem isn't you. The problem is me. I am running from something, and I... Well, you just don't want to go to where it is I'm running to. What is that supposed to it mean? It means... Look, you remember the first time that we met when you interviewed me? The out-of-body experience that I had. After your father was killed? And I died. Well, at least clinically. What everybody told me that what I experienced was a dream. Well, it wasn't a dream. I saw it. I know it. It was real. It was hell. And that showed me something more clearly than anything that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Don't get psychic on me. <sighs> I'm a reporter, remember? I reported your story objectively, but that doesn't mean I believed your conclusions. That's right, you don't have to believe it, but I do. You see, that's the point. I know what God's got waiting for me, and I don't want it for anyone else. I don't believe that stuff. Well, then believe the facts. My inheritance came from gambling, prostitution, murder. Oh, come on, Russ. You didn't do that for the money. All that died with your father. Well, like father, like son. I'm no different than him. You are so different from him. You are nothing like your father. You were, you were always there when I needed someone. And no criminal would have done that. You're wrong. <laughs> you see, I know what I feel inside. And I know what's going to happen to me, whether you believe it or not. I guess it was wrong to get hypothetical. I better get going. I understand. Well, this is probably the last time that you'll be seeing me. You make that sound so eternal. No, I, I really didn't mean it to sound like that. You won't be leaving altogether. What does that mean? You've left behind some memories of a wonderful friendship. I don't think I could have made it without you, Russ. Through the trial and, and afterwards, even now. You take care. You're leaving one other thing behind. What? The hope that someone out there could care about me. Well, Gil is waiting in the wings, waiting for that second chance. If he'd cared, he wouldn't have left. I hope that you stop running from this vision of yours and find what you're looking for. What I'm looking for 
Marianne, Ben, Dave, everybody tries to tell me that that my vision was wrong, that I don't understand God. I understand. I know what I saw. And I know that the time I got left here, I gotta do something good. Ah, maybe that's why I'm going to med school. Who knows? Bye, Stace. It ain't things for you to do. You weren't there, Preston. You didn't hear Courtney explain it. You should be grateful Peter Davison decided not to press charges against you. Come on, don't you see what he's doing? He's only dropped those charges hoping that I won't drag him into court for assaulting my wife. But I am not going to be deterred from the issues at hand, Preston. This guy has ulterior motives to this gracious act of mercy. The only ulterior motives I don't understand are Courtney's. Oh, so now blame Courtney. I'm not you? blaming Courtney. I just want more information. Like, how did Peter Davidson know where to find her that night? I mean, she's staying in a dormitory in her friend's room. Preston, all the more reason for him to pursue her there. Privacy. Away from the hotel room. Preston, Tina told Davidson that she was in that room alone. A dormitory is hardly a very private place. Peter Davidson attempted to rape Courtney. Why does she wait 24 hours before she tells anyone? And then who does she tell? A husband that she hasn't spoken to in days. Then she's currently trying to have the marriage annulled. Now, what about that, huh? Well, maybe that's why she came over here the other night, Preston. To tell you. Oh, fine, fine. Then why didn't she stay and tell me? Maybe she was just too embarrassed, Preston. Too embarrassed? Well, she hardly held anything back when she finally told you. I am shocked at your insensitivity. Look, I'm not insensitive. I just do not want to act stupidly as you did. Do you realize the sort of negative publicity that something like this can generate? Do you realize what it could do to Courtney, to her reputation, to your reputation as a businessman? Well, I could see it now. Young corporate executive brawls in local diner with lover of his estranged wife. Wouldn't they have a great time with that? And from there, they find out about the annulment. The annulment leads them to your impotence. It sounds like a story you read in one of those cheap little newspapers you pick up at checkout counters. Well, I'm grateful that Davidson dropped those charges. Now we can sweep all of this under the rug. Let things calm down, we'll find out what really happened. Meanwhile, we can proceed with other matters. The only matter that we are going to proceed with, Preston, is a lawsuit charging Peter Davidson with assault and attempted rape. You do that and you could ruin a business deal for me that I've been working on for weeks. What do I care about your business deals? What effect do they have on me? You are still my son-in-law. I cannot afford any more negative publicity. Now, I forbid you to you enter it. what? I said I forbid. Since when have you been able to forbid me from doing anything, Preston? I am now thoroughly convinced that you're willing to take Peter Davidson's side on this and no one else's. And I don't like it one bit. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's just say that I, um, uh, <clears throat> I fell down at the playground at recess. Uh, let's just say that this nurse has seen too many young men who've been involved in a street fight. It wasn't a street fight, come oh, on. So you admit it was a fight? I object. The defense is leading the witness. You're hurting me, too. Oh. I don't have anything to defend. It's obvious that you're defending something. Why do mothers always suspect something? Well, we have to. If we didn't, our little boys would never grow up to be men. Low blow. Look, Peter, are we going to play these games all evening? I was in a bar. At times like this, I wish your father were here. Okay, a den of iniquity. Same One thing. and the same. Walked in there, I had my blade, my woman. And a bottle of whiskey in your back pocket, right? Something like that, yeah. Look, Peter, I'm not trying to pry. I just wish you would appreciate that I'm concerned about you. 
All right. Okay. I went in this bar, and um, I was sitting there, minding my own business. This guy comes in. He's had a few too many to drink, and uh, starts talking big. Before I know, he lunges at me. I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm trying to be inconspicuous, but somebody's always mistaken me for Charles Bronson or something. Whammy, is it? I throw myself at the mercy of the court, okay? I plead forgiveness. Man. Well, if this doctor can get through to her, more power to her. My government said the same thing. Well, it's true. I mean, Lord knows enough people have tried. Yeah, but baby, I mean, what about the consequence, you know? Long term, I mean, immediate results doesn't mean that it's the best for everybody. I think there's more to this, Domi, than just self-help or, or, you know, positive thinking, you know? I, I don't know, something's just kind of fishy. I think you suspect too much. And I also think you've been doing investigating reporting too long. Well, then you explain this. Why is it every time I call them, they won't give me any kind of information over the phone, but they say I have to come down there in person? So, a lot of organizations don't give out information freely. Do they usually preface it with, the only way you're going to understand Domi is to experience it? So what you want is for McGovern to give you a chance to check out one of these sessions so that you can do a little poking around, huh? Yeah. I go down there, play along with the game. You never know. Just see where it takes me. I am not taking sides. I am just telling you to get your facts straight before you start off swinging and filing lawsuits. I speak from personal experience. I remember I had a secretary, little Sally Bridget, sweet, innocent, lovely child. Best secretary I ever had. I was very fond of that young lady. And then she started running around with a sailor off an oil tanker, grease monkey from an engine room. Real nice guy. And then sweet, innocent little Sally, she falls in love and she gets married. Everything was fine for the first few months. Then she starts coming into the office, telling me how this guy is roughing her up. I never asked questions. I didn't want any part of it. Until one day, she showed up with her face black and blue and I almost swollen shut. I never said anything. No, no, I just steam out of the office looking for the husband. I catch up with him on the dock and I tie in with him. Somebody calls the cops, and I'm arrested. Then I find out from the husband, sweet, innocent little Sally, she's got a boyfriend, and he's the one that tried to rearrange her face. Fortunately for me, the husband dropped the charges. Oh, and I guess I'm supposed to be able to relate to that story, is it? Yes, find out the facts before you go off half-cocked. Oh, so what, Courtney's lying and Peter's telling the truth? No! I don't know enough at this point to make any kind of a judgment, and neither do you. There are three sides to every story. Yours, his, and the truth. And I'll tell you this. I believe there could be some truth in Courtney's accusations. Oh, well, thank you for your uncompromising support. Yeah, but if true... There are better ways of dealing with the Peter Davidsons of this world. Well, what do you propose that we do? I'm going to have a talk with Courtney. After that... Then we deal with Peter Davidson. Peter, look, I just... I just hate seeing you go through what you're going through because of the lifestyle you've been living lately. Are you saying an accident can't happen? Oh, huh? so this was an accident, huh? Boy, if I had a nickel for every guy who thought it was the other guy's fault. This isn't what it seems, okay? Fine. Just keep on getting beat up. Maybe someday it'll knock some sense into your head. Maybe. Look, Peter. These things are gonna keep on happening to you until you... until you stop riding the fence with God. Look, you've got one foot in the world, and the other foot 
Well, I don't know where the other one is. Look, I, I feel for all the pain that you're going through. I really do, especially all that associated with, with Courtney and Vicky in the last several months. But you're going to feel less pain if, if you just stop and, and ask God what he wants for you instead of, instead of trying to pursue your life all by yourself. Is that my Sunday school lesson for the day? Hmm? Yeah. Hmm. 11 o'clock service will follow shortly. You preaching that too? Silence implies consent. You won't get that from me. A voice crying in the wilderness. No, 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 no. Just a mother who wants only the best for her son. You know, the more you talk, the more this domey thing is starting to sound peculiar. Yeah. Yeah, and all of those peculiarities are starting to add up. I mean, Nancy and this domey place, all of it, it's... Yeah, I, I, I mean the, um, that this could be following on the same lines as some of those other psychological cults. You know, too, Carla, it's the, just the kind of thing, too, that Nancy would get sucked into. Nancy would get sucked into anything. No, but I mean, I sense what you're talking about. I guess a lot of people are very gullible. Gullible isn't the word. I mean, people are searching for something to base their lives on. We all need a foundation. You <clears throat> are starting to sound like mom. Oh, come on. I mean, you know that your mom didn't encourage Nancy to join this organization. She knows that people like Nancy have a void in their lives. And all they're really looking for is God. But until they find him, they usually substitute it with a counterfeit. Carla, Carla, I don't know if I buy all of that, you know. Well, you'd better buy it. Because if you intend on snooping around, you better know exactly what foundation your big feet are standing on. Mm -hmm.